Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different than my usual videos. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while now and if you prefer this type of content, let me know in the comments and feel free to subscribe. So today we're gonna to take an in-depth look at Goose's death and we're gonna figure out if there's any way that Maverick could have avoided it. So I've been a pilot for about seven years now and going through flight school, we do a lot of spin training. Like we're taught specifically how to identify stalls, spins, spiral dives, and how to avoid these types of situations, and then also how to recover. Now, having rewatched Top Gun again, it's pretty clear that Maverick did not have that training. Goose, I'm losing control, I'm losing control. I can't, I can't control it. We won't recover. So this part was a little bit weird, but I think most likely those sporadic control movements were really just a stylistic choice in the movie, and it wasn't intended to be the most accurate or true to life. But I think it would be really interesting to see what would have happened if, instead of ejecting, Maverick had actually attempted to recover from that spin using the correct anti-spin control inputs. So we're going to be testing this out in DCS World, which, if you don't already know, is a highly realistic military flight simulator that's even used to train real fighter pilots. Now, I can't comment on how close DCS World is to real life, but the consensus seems to be that it's probably as close as you're going to get without doing the real thing. As a simulator, it actually does a pretty realistic job. Leap, you know, this is as real as you can get. Yeah, this is actually more realistic than what you've seen, like maybe in like Top Gun. So as a simulator, this obviously has its limitations, but I think this will give us probably a pretty good approximation of real world flight physics. Now, before we test this out, we should talk a little bit about G-forces to see if it was even possible for Maverick to manipulate the controls while in the flat spin. A pit forward, Goose! I can't reach the ejection handle! Because if he can't, then our whole hypothesis just kind of falls apart. So in the movie, if you time the spin, you'll see that on average, Maverick's F-14 completes one full spin revolution approximately every three seconds. The distance between Maverick and the F-14 center of gravity is going to be approximately nine meters, which means that the tangential velocity of the pilot is going to be about 19 meters per second in a flat spin. Now, if we calculate the centripetal acceleration and then divide that by gravity, we get about four Gs. Now, 4Gs is pretty manageable for any trained fighter pilot, so it's pretty plausible that Maverick could have attempted to control the aircraft. Now, the bigger question is, did they have enough altitude in the movie to recover from the flat spin in time? So let's put it to the test. All right, so to enter the spin, we're gonna start with a power on stall entry at a 30 degree attitude. We are gonna have our right engine at full power and our left at idle to simulate a compressor stall, just like in the movie. And once we're in the spin, we'll probably get an actual compressor stall because that is something that Eagle Dynamics has actually modeled in the game. Now we don't know what altitude they started at, but we do know that they passed through 8,000 feet. So we're just gonna wait until 8,000 feet before we attempt to recover. Now, as soon as we get close to stall speed, we're gonna pull back on the stick and kick the left rudder all the way over. By holding these control inputs, you can see an incipient spin developing here. And if we hold these control inputs for long enough, we'll see this develop into a complete flat spin. So now we've got a flat spin. We're gonna wait until we hit that 8,000 feet altitude before we recover. And as soon as we hit 8,000 feet, we're going to go full opposite throttles, control column all the way forward, and full right rudder. Altitude 8,000! 7,000! Six! We're at six, man! Ah. All right, so we're gonna start the spin recovery right about now. So here we go, we're just gonna hold these control inputs until the nose drops. Now the spin has stopped, now I'm gonna neutralize controls, throttle to idle, roll wings level, and ease out of dive. So we have about 3,500 feet to spare, so that's not bad at all. So in conclusion, Maverick definitely could have avoided Goose's death if he just used his anti-spin control inputs. 
Thanks for watching, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more content like this.